and welcome to CRW Creative Writing 304. We are tackling copyright publishing law and that's a mouthful. <laughs> one of our books is, uh, let's see, let's grab this one, is this one and as I've been reading it I've been thinking about how maybe some of these footnotes are really overwhelming in a lot of ways because I don't know a lot about case law and all of that. So this is the first time we're running this course and it's my first time exploring it with you. So we're going to learn a little bit together. There may be things that I don't cover well enough. So ask questions, ask lots of questions. Um, as you can see by my other YouTube videos, I have um, in-depth work on a lot of different courses, but I've taught those numerous times. So you and I are going through this together. But I really want you to think about the fact that when we're reading something like this book and we see footnotes that like we don't really understand, that we are diving into something that if you've read the introduction, you'll see this is stuff these particular gentlemen have been working on for decades. Um, and so of course it's going to be new to us. It's going to be something that we're not quite familiar with. But they also started somewhere. They also started with going, you know, what are cases and what does that look like? And we're going to do that same thing. So again, don't hesitate to ask questions. Don't hesitate to say, I'm not really sure what's going on there. I'm already seeing great things like sharing different resources that have helped people understand and process. And I hope I can create some of those as well. Um, so I like to start every course with a course overview just to let you see and hear me to know that I'm really there on the other side of an email, on the other side of a computer screen, um, and to look at some of the sort of core concepts for any particular course. I also like to look at things that I do specifically so that you can be aware and ready for them. So for our course, we have, of course, course objectives and student outcomes that are part of every single course, but we're going to look at ours and ask sort of where they're going and why. We are also going to take a quick look at assignments, the types, and um, some possible templates that we can start to create for these. Um, there are great questions to ask for every class. How does that particular instructor interpret APA? Can they give you a copy of different things? And there are some things that we're going to learn together because we are going to be doing videos for a class and that may not be something you're you're terribly familiar with so please deep breath you're going to have a partner with this I'm not letting you do that alone if you're comfortable with videos awesome that's great but if you aren't please know that we're gonna zoom we're gonna work together we're gonna find things that support you in accomplishing this and of course I want to talk a little bit about feedback how do I do that what does that look like for me obviously this course I don't have feedback ready but um, I do have a process and I want you to know sort of what that process is and of course questions are part of it I want you to ask questions about it so let's look at course objectives and student learning outcomes so these are the, the sort of basic work that you're going to see in any particular course. It's going to say, well, why? Why that course? Why do we do it? Why do we bother with that idea? And that's where we get it. I always encourage students to read these kinds of things in the syllabus before you start a course um, because you'll read them and you'll think, what's that? <laughs> you won't necessarily know how they're using the words or how that language is working or what exactly they mean. But then I encourage you to also read it at the end of a course, and you will find that there is so much knowledge that's just pouring out of you in just a couple of weeks. So first off, we're going to introduce students to the publishing industry and give them insight into the legal implications of publishing a book or magazine. Um, a lot of this is about ownership and who, who we're working with and who therefore has sort of value in that situation. For instance, um, we could say that anything I write while I'm at CCU using CCU resources, it means I need to note that on the article that I would publish or share because I'm not doing that alone. I'm doing that through my professional job. And so I have to make those connections. So those kinds of things are happening everywhere. And we're looking into sort of the, the little bits and pieces. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be an entertainment lawyer or, you know, in the publishing industry when we're done. <laughs> Are we saying hi? But I do want you to feel like, okay, I kind of know who who's there and who to talk to. We're going to review the basics of copyright law. There are some great details to know, things that can help us um, process sort of why we can and can't use things like images. Images are part of copyright. So when we take a cute picture off the internet and we use it, that's someone else's work and we need to credit it and we need to see if they allow for that use. 
obviously there are things about you know fair use laws that we are also looking at in a couple of assignments already in sessions one and two but we're looking at those kinds of things so that we feel more comfortable another thing to think about there are websites like project gutenberg and they share um, works that have been written out of copyright now, those works um, have to be at least 100 years old to be out of copyright. And that, that means that everyone can use them after that um, in general. There are always caveats. But we're looking for those kinds of things so that we're like, oh, okay, I know now why that does that and that does that. Exploring the fundamentals of a publishing agreement. What is that going to look like? What, what could someone possibly hand you at the end of your creative writing journey? Uh, we're going to just start to get to know the basics. And that fair use and creative perspective that we're looking at to say, how would we want to use work so that we are using them in an honoring and legal way? But I think more than that, I tend to think of it in terms of how can I honor the work someone has put into um, what they have created? It takes so much, as you were finding out, to create and to share that creation. So I never want to just take that from someone. But not only is it about honor and doing the right thing, it's about the laws that surround it. And so we're starting to say, what's going on there? And we're going to create some, some stories to explore those ideas of what could it look like and what could it feel like. And this is where we're going to start to look at some videos. We're going to introduce principled negotiation, and we are going to practice. So I will be on one side of that screen and you will record response videos as well as writing different information. And we're looking at all of these ideas, these strategies and these approaches from a biblical perspective. Um, we, we want everyone to leave successful and well. We don't want to be taking severe advantage of anyone, nor do we want to be severely taken advantage of. So we want to start to think about those processes. Then, student learning outcomes. How do we make that happen? We want you, by the end of the class, to demonstrate an understanding um, of how to perform a fair use analysis. How do you look at something and say, I do have the right to that image. I do have the right to share that in my PowerPoint that I'm putting online on the internet. Do I have those rights? There are, if you post a video to YouTube, you'll also see that, that there are different questions about whether or not what you're posting is according to your best call fair use. Um, and that can lead to some really, really interesting conversations as well in that sort of sphere. Um, we want to be able to implement a fair use balancing test by reviewing scenario cases. So I know some of the cases that we're looking at in here feel a little wild, like, oh, that's a lot of knowledge and info. But we're going to, you know, we're going to use the basic ones. Don't, don't stress about that. We're going to talk about them and explore. We want to know how to negotiate. So that's that big part. We want you to feel like it's not brand new. I can haggle. I can negotiate. I can figure out these entry level positions. Um, I feel more ready, more capable. Does that mean you're absolutely ready to go and that's your new profession? No, but we want you to feel excited about those steps. And of course, throughout all of it, we want to discuss those biblical principles. That idea a minute ago of like, not just what's legal and right, but what's honorable and good. And that is what we want to apply here. So how do we do all of those steps? How do we make them happen? We want to have discussions, of course, and we want to have submitted assignments. Some of those will be written, most of them, probably 80, 90 percent, but a couple will be by video. Um, we talk about the different ideas we share in discussions, and then we get to go in depth and explore on our own for submitted assignments. I tend to approach discussions as you know, the way we all talk to each other. I don't look for perfect grammar and all of that. Do your best, practice things like APA, but don't feel extreme pressure because we're, we're conversing, we're having a conversation. And then submitted assignments, we want to focus on all those things. We want to keep getting better at all of those certain, all those different possibilities. So I like to have charts that helps me see and process. So this calendar with dates as well is in the course shell, which we're going to glance at in a moment. Um, but it lists to the different items, discussions and submitted assignments, sort of where they are and what the point values are so that you can start to sort of adjust and get some ideas out there. As you can tell, they start off lower at 10s and 50s and then they move to 30s and 100s and things like that. So we're not starting off hard first. <laughs> we are exploring it together and testing things out. And I also included the reading assignments here. As you can see, they are quite heavy. So make sure you're planning for that and make sure that you are looking at it not necessarily as, well, I have to to have everything read, you know, Monday and Tuesday. You're reading over that week, you're applying those ideas and asking questions. So now let's look at two points about feedback. I like to give feedback in numerous areas. So I like to, of course, use the rubrics. They are grading criteria. They're part of every class at 
pretty much every university. I don't know of one that doesn't have them. Um, and those are part of each course. You can glance at them as well if you go to your due dates and grades and you can see what those um, criteria are. Then I like to put content um, comments within the paper. So comment bubbles, underlining notes to really interact so that you don't have to think, well, what part was she talking about? <laughs> Where did that connect? Instead, if if it's properly submitted as a dot doc or in the videos, I can put that clear information in the connective area. And of course, in the feedback bubble, that's where I like to give links and supports for outside materials and to give you an overall reasoning for why I'm doing the grade I'm doing. So part of that is you interacting with it. Did I miss a button? Usually I catch it, I'll be like, that grade is strangely lower, and that's when I realize I missed a button. But I want you to always check that. A, you're seeing what you can get from that, so you can get information and grow, but you're also being my double checker and reaching out to me if it doesn't quite make sense. Um, anytime you ever want something copy edited, um, please reach out and ask for that. I don't do full copy edits on anything in classes um, just because that's a huge amount of time and I want it to be something you want and are seeking. So I tend to do that by request. I copy edit areas or sections and not full items. Remember that feedback is a conversation. I'm not just throwing it out there. I want to take what you've given me. So we, we give you an assignment, we give you an idea, and then you respond to it to the best of your ability. And then I give you feedback about that. And then that shouldn't be the end. It should be coming back and saying, okay, I get where I did well, where I didn't do well. And maybe there are edits to make with that. Um, for me, I never like just a low grade period. I like to say, well, if it's really low, we're not communicating effectively. And so we need to chat and we need to communicate and we need to figure that out and redo that. That until we are communicating effectively. So please know that if you ever get a poor grade, look at those feedback comments. I want you to do well because I want you to be processing the information and understanding. I want you to feel confident about your voice and how you are sharing material. Um, anytime it's confusing or surprising, reach out and ask. A, I could make a mistake. That can happen, but also it could be that I'm asking for something else or that we're missing something. And again, that needs to be a conversation so that we correct it. And finally, learning should be fun. Even this tricky law stuff should be fun. So even though we're exploring these really dense topics throughout much of the term, um, we're not lawyers. We are putting our toe into a very different world than what most of us are used to speaking. And so we're going to try things, we're going to explore, um, and we'll see what we pick up when we're there. Don't aim for perfection, aim for a new general knowledge of something you hadn't explored before. Because that's fun, that's exciting. And anytime it stops being super fun, that's when you need to be reaching out to me. Anytime you feel like you are spending forever on assignments or you're not getting there, that's when you need to be reaching out because there may be things that we aren't communicating about that we need to discuss. So I wanted to glance here as well. Oops, it's covering my face. That looks a little weird. <laughs> okay, there we go. I'll lean that way too. Okay, so um, I wanted to glance at our, our course shell um, because I wanted you to look for key things like the student lounge over here. When we go to things like the due dates and grades, that's going to give us the opportunity to click on assignments and sort of see what's happening. The student lounge will have threads for just about anything. So like live Zooms and including PowerPoints like this and having links that we discuss, all of those go there in a group setting. Um, and then, of course, discussions are more specific. Um, and I want you to look at things like faculty contact information and office hours. It's a big one. <laughs> it's going to have copies of the course calendar that I create for myself, so I'm sharing it with you. It will have links to the Zoom meetings. They're also in the student lounge, um, and it should have lots of extra useful information. So anytime you want to know where something is or how to get there, check those locations, the student lounge and the faculty contact info. Um, there is always something there. And don't forget to check those announcements. Obviously, it's been within seven days for our first two or three, but each one will come out. A new one will come out each week. And I hope again to get ideas and insights from you. So I hope that you will constantly be checking these things and reaching out and asking the hard questions and the easy questions and anything that remotely resembles a question. And remember, a question can be, because you are learning and I am teaching it, a question can be a question mark. It can be that assignment 
question mark. And that gives me the opportunity to say, hey, I need to step up here. What can I do to support and help you? You don't need to know the question or the answer. It's my job to figure those out. So ask away with any sort of steps whatsoever. Don't feel like you have to have a great, perfect question. Just reach out and go, oh, help. Um, and then we can discuss and communicate and find great steps and solutions. So I hope we have lots of fun this term. I'm really excited about learning things that I'm not fully familiar with, and I'm really excited to explore them with you.